Welcome back to another episode of our channel, Best Freaking Friends Forever. So today we're going to be talking about three men and a baby. So it was re its release date was November 25th of 1987. Its budget was $11 million. Opening weekend, it almost made its budget back. It made $10 million, which with inflation today is $24 million. Um, in the U.S., it grossed $168 million, which with today's inflation is $398. And the same for the worldwide. It grossed $168, so $398 million with inflation today. So it did, I mean, it did really well. But like we talked about during, or it had a lot of big names in it. <laughs> well, and for 87 to do so well, they were only a million off of their budget. That's not bad at all mm -hmm. for opening weekend. You can't beat that in the 80s. Three best friends they're bachelors and they live together and it was funny because tom Selleck and steve gutenberg were the were true bachelors back then so during the two week rehearsal period before filming they took um to dancing out on the town them he'd been married a while and they visited a couple nightclubs and just to rekindle the feeling to give him the feeling of being a bachelor and just kind of so they, they could project that in the film. I guess they caused a lot of excitement being out there. I mean, I like how they brought those three together. Because I feel like they had a lot of chemistry, the cast. Well, I think Tom Selleck is what, I don't know, just throughout the whole movie, he's kind of like the lead. Because we really don't see Jack, who is Ted Danson. We don't mm -hmm. see him much in the movie. And he's in away, Turkey. and that's when Mary gets dropped off. So that Tom Selleck goes for, or Tom, Peter's character, well, Peter, Tom Selleck's character, goes for a run, and he comes home, and there's... And I kind of thought that was funny how he opens the door and he sees that, or he walks in and then he opens the door and he sees the baby, he closes it and he's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden there's a baby at their front door. Yeah. And then they think, it, they think this baby is a package that yes. Jack yeah. had called and said, Hey, somebody's leaving a package, you know, take care of it while I'm gone. Cause the way he words it, it makes it sound like it's going to, you know, that it is really a baby come to find out it's actually drugs that he didn't. And supposedly Jack doesn't know that it was drugs. I just think it was sweet when they have the bond with the baby, Peter and Michael do. And then Jack finally comes home because he, his part was cut off the movie that he was doing and he comes home and they basically let him sink or swim. They were like, it's your baby. And they're in there playing pool. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let's give him another hour before we decide to help him. But in the end, they do. And they do, like you said, they do end up forming a bond with the baby. And then the mom shows back up and tries to... And I, that was like, I don't know, that scene made me really sad. Because I was like, oh, like, she came back to take the baby. Sylvia did. And she wanted to take her home. And Ted was just, I feel like, you know, Jack was kind of like, okay. And then it was Peter and Michael that were like, we got to go get this baby back. And then they end up finding her back at the house, don't they? Or back at the yeah. apartment. Yeah, she was waiting she on them. Yeah. And, you know, breaking down saying she couldn't do it by herself. And, and then they end up asking her to live with them. And they're going to build a room one for her. Because mm -hmm. Peter's character is a architect. I would, like, I know that this whole apartment that they were in was just in a studio like it was just all props and stuff but i think that didn't it to you just seem very like a lot like a lot of rooms a lot of s square footage they kept going in circles like there were circles and they'd go through one room to go i don't know i thought that was yeah it was very rare and there were there was a lot this is like a lot of times like oh it'd be neat to see that but this is one set that i would love to have actually walked through just kind of seen because they even have, like, the kitchen area that looks kind of like a greenhouse in a way. Mm -hmm. Like, that area looks, doesn't even, like, it's not cohesive with the rest of the apartment. No, it's got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's I three feel like each room, Yeah, well, and that's, and maybe that's why they did that. They wanted to see, I mean, a true bachelor pad. Oh, and, like, at the very beginning, we see Michael um, painting the, like, entranceway, which I really like that. But at the end, we get to see that they added um, Sylvia and Mary to the picture. That was a really sweet moment too. There was a couple of things that like I picked, I uh, like wrote down that kind of I had issues with. <laughs> One was the um, cotton balls when they used them to clean yeah, her bottom. I, yeah. <laughs> what are you guys doing? This is a big, absolute no, no nowadays. Uh, it is so harped on 
And I saw it in the movie and I was like, oh my gosh, doctors today would go berserk. Uh, the baby was sleeping on her belly. That's a huge no-no now. Like if you even like attempted to put a baby on their belly, they would be, you. they would crucify you. I, yeah, there was a, well, we talked about stuff like that that yeah. probably would not fly today. The detective came up to talk with them about the drugs and um, they had said she was a big eater and he said a big eater makes for a not so nervous adult and i've never heard that like there's always this wives tales i've never heard a, bi a big eater being a less nervous adult eater goes to the newsstand and buys like his weekly magazines and stuff that he buys and he bought a little toy for mary yes yeah and that toy now is really popular it's um sophia yeah and didn't it okay so because i thought okay so correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you probably had one for your kids. Isn't that a giraffe? Yes, it's a giraffe. Okay, so in the movie, didn't he call it a dinosaur? Well, they yeah, they were all arguing what it actually was. I was like, okay, because I was like, that's a Sophie. Because I noticed that too. I was like, that's a Sophie, isn't it? And I was like, that's not a dinosaur. That's a giraffe, I think. Yeah. I mean, see, I don't have kids, so I've never had to go buy one. But I, I mean, my sisters have kids, and they've yeah. had a okay because that bothered me too i was like that is not a dinosaur oh there was the one so like after sylvia had taken mary away they were all like moping around the apartment and doing very you know watching videos and things like that one thing that jack had done was took a pillow and shoved it under his shirt oh yeah i was like <laughs> i was like okay jack if that helps you to remember you weren't even there for the pregnancy you didn't even know you had a kid I, was say, I don't think guys do that. No, I know women do that sometimes, but yeah. I, I've never, I didn't know guys. No. I remember being a kid and somebody was like, do you ever see three men and a baby? There's a ghost in that movie. So mm -hmm. if you go to one hour, one minute and 48 seconds, you can, Jack's mom is there and he's trying to get her to help. And when they walk past one of the windows, there's what looks like a young boy there or something standing in the window. It's very weird. Um, but it was actually, and after I watched it this time, you can tell that it is Jack. He's in a tuxedo and a top hat. It is a cardboard cutout of him in that window. And later in the, at the end of the movie, we see it again, but there was always this um, story that it was actually a ghost and the boy had died in the apartment. And, but that's not true. That's not what really, because it's all on a set. They built all of this. I was going to say, it was a soundstage, yeah, or a yeah. set, yeah. Because we were talking a little, I don't know if we already put this on there, but like the highest grossing movie of 87 in mm -hmm. the United States, which I thought, and Three Men and Baby was the first ever live action Disney movie to gross over 100 million in the U.S., which I thought was kind of interesting, too. Well, oh, can you, so can you picture these people being Tom Hanks, Michael Keaton, John Travolta, and Bruce Willis were considered for the role of Michael, and that eventually portrayed by Steve Gutenberg. Can you imagine those any of them as him? No. Well, and just how they bonded with the baby. And you can, well, Peter, he had the strongest bond with her, and he wasn't even the biological dad. Jack mm -hmm. was. Yep. And, I, and it's funny because I think Jack had the least amount of bond with her. And I get it because he wasn't there at the beginning. But even after the fact, I still don't think he had as strong of a bond as what those two did. Yeah, as Peter he's definitely Michael. the more playboy type out of the three, I think. Well, they had an issue with that because towards the end of filming, the babies who played Mary were so entranced by them that they would no longer. And they had like they were had microphones. So at first it was like they were ignoring the microphones and all of that. So she would start to follow it with her gaze and then they, and not looking at the actors. Cause she was not, you know, she'd already seen them a lot, of, a lot. So she wasn't entranced by them anymore. So he, Leonard Nimoy told crew member or had the other crew members had to start hiding the microphone. So yeah, the Pampers company, cause they had, well, that was another thing. And I told you that that bothered me, like how they, they showed all the baby changing. Like, I don't know. I don't feel like, and then the showering with, with the baby and, and showing the, they showed everything for yeah, sure. And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't know if we do that. To, I mean, I don't, I don't think we see that stuff today. You've got too many people that are crazy that, that they get off on that. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I don't know. Well, like, especially that, now where there's this huge hard. stigma, like if you go back throughout history, just how we did treat children in Hollywood it's a big thing right now where it's very frowned upon. If you watch Shirley Temple, mm -hmm. even back then, it was really bad. And you'd think back then it wouldn't have been. There are, um, you can find them on YouTube. There's videos of like Shirley Temple movies in like the 
induinos or whatever they call them, where they're implying sexual motions with Shirley Temple. It's very disturbing. Like there's this one where she's really well known for dancing in her movies, like dancing Mm -hmm. and singing are really big parts of her movies. And there's this one where she's dancing with an older man. And of course she's a lot smaller than him and they're like swinging her around and stuff. And he has, he has the top of her head and he is taking her head. Now, this is a tall man and a short child and he's taking her head and going back and forth like this with it. That implies something. And they always had her in very short dresses. You could always see all of her, the back of her thigh. I mean, these are children. This is not a grown adult. So, you know, it's just Hollywood has this stigma of sexualizing children and it's disgusting (laughs) but after last year like a bunch of stuff had come out about like a lot of celebrities that are in with like this child's sex trafficking ring and things like that so you know you look at this is back in 1987 it makes you wonder like how deep is hollywood into this type of thing that was three men and a baby um we did this like kind of honoring fathers and all the hard work that they do, because these men really stuck it out for a baby they didn't even know, for a woman they didn't even know. So let us know, have you watched this movie? You could go watch it on Disney Plus, as we said. Um, until next time, I am Tiffany. This is my BFFF Shelly. Join us next time, friends, for another great episode.